Welcome to my YouTube channel Pathology Decipher. In this video, we are going to see about cell death. There are two principal types of cell death that is necrosis and apoptosis. They both differ in mechanism and morphology. First, let's see about necrosis. Necrosis is a pathologic process and the causes of necrosis are ischemia, exposure to microbial toxins, birds and uh, physical chemical injury, active protease leak out of the cell. Necrosis is characterized by the degradation of cellular proteins and the leakage of the cell content which act as the biomarker. And an important thing is the inflammation occur in the necrosis. Specific substance released from injured cell have been called as DAMPs which is damage associated molecular patterns such as uric acid by the degradation of uh, DNA and uh, ATP from the mitochondria. Then cardiac specific troponin which act as a biomarker in myocardial infarction. When large number of cells die, then the organ is said to be necrotic. In this diagram, we can see that A is the normal cell and the next cell which undergo pyknosis where the cytoplasm is more pink and the nucleus is shrunken and the next cell where the cytoplasm is more pink and the nucleus is fragmented that is called karyorexis and then the D which is where the cytoplasm is intensely pink and the nuclear material is disappeared that is called karyolysis. These are the cytoplasmic and nuclear changes that occur in the cell during necrosis. The etiological agent that act on the normal cell and uh, causes the formation of myelin figure, then swelling of the endoplasmic reticulum and detachment of ribosome from the endoplasmic reticulum, membrane blubbing and the swelling of the mitochondria. Then the plasma membrane gets breakdown and the organelles and nucleus gets leaked out of the cell that causes inflammation in necrosis. Let's see about the types of necrosis. The first one is the coagulative necrosis. In all organs, coagulative necrosis can occur except brain. A localized area of coagulative necrosis is called infarct. In this type, uh, the architecture of the dead tissue is preserved for a span of at least some days. And the affected tissue will have a firm texture. Here is the wedge-shaped kidney where there is infarct, that is the yellow color which is in the infarcted kidney. Next is the liquefied necrosis where the digestion of dead cells occur resulting in the transformation of tissue into a viscous liquid. The necrotic material in this type of liquefied necrosis is called pus which is uh, creamy yellow and the hypoxic death of the cell occur within the CNS that is brain is also included in this type of necrosis. Here we can see an infarct in the brain showing dissolution of the tissue. Next is the caseous necrosis which is found in the center of the foci of tuberculosis infection. Caseous means yellow white which is also said to be GC. Here we can see the tuberculosis of the lung with a large area of caseous necrosis containing that yellow white that is the GC debris. Next is the fat necrosis where the fat destruction occur due to release of pancreatic lipase into the substance of pancreas and the peritoneal cavity. Here is the picture of fat necrosis in acute pancreatitis. The areas of white chalky deposit presents the foci of fat deposits with the calcium soap formation at the site of lipid breakdown in mesentery. Next is the fibrinoid necrosis which involves the blood vessel and it occurs when the antigen antibody are deposited in the wall of the artery along with the plasma protein and then leak out of the blood vessel resulting in the fibrinoid. Therefore, it is called fibrinoid necrosis. Next, let's move on to other principal type of cell death that is apoptosis. It is also known as programmed cell death. Here, the apoptotic cell that is the cell that is going to undergo apoptosis break up into plasma membrane bound fragment that contains small portion of cytoplasm and nucleus and this is called apoptotic bodies. The plasma membrane of the fragment that is the apoptotic bodies is altered to produce find me signals for phagocytosis. The dead cell will be rapidly phagocytosed before the leakage of content from the cell. Therefore, inflammatory reaction will not occur whereas necrosis undergo inflammation but apoptosis does not have inflammatory reaction. Apoptosis can occur both uh, in physiologic and pathologic conditions. Apoptosis is also induced by the viral infections or by host immune response as in uh, viral hepatitis. Then pathologic atrophy in uh, parenchymal organs after duct restriction as in pancreas, peritoneal gland, kidney. Here the cell begin apoptosis and the formation of blebbing occur where the nucleus condensing occurs. Then there is apoptotic bodies where each body is plasma membrane bound and uh, it is phagocytosed. Each apoptotic body is phagocytosed 
before the leakage of content therefore in no inflammatory reaction occur during apoptosis cells shrinkage occur and the chromatin gets condensed the cell cycles will be reduced and cell organelles will be normal cytoplasm will be dense let's see about the mechanism of apoptosis apoptosis result from the activation of enzymes called caspase caspase is a protease containing cysteine at their active site and cleave the protein after aspartic residues Actually the caspase is an inactive enzyme after enzymatic cleavage it becomes active there are two phases of apoptosis initiation phase and execution phase and there are two pathways intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway intrinsic pathway is also known as mitochondrial pathway and extrinsic pathway is also known as death receptor pathway first let's see about intrinsic pathway of apoptosis which is also known as mitochondrial pathway here we have to keep a point in mind that is The, there is increased permeability of mitochondrial outer membrane and there will be release of death inducing molecules like uh, cytochrome c into the cytoplasm the death, death inducing that is the substance which increase the permeability of the mitochondrial outer membrane is called pro apoptotic molecule here there is three bcl family the one is i anti apoptotic second is pro apoptotic and the third one is regulated apoptotic initiators which is also known as bh3 only proteins anti apoptotic will keep the mitochondrial outer membrane more impermeable and the pro apoptotic will enhance the permeability and the regulated apoptotic initiators which is also known as bh3 only proteins will upregulate the pro apoptotic molecules when there is deprivation of survival signals uh, because of dna damage or accumulation of misfolded proteins the bhl only proteins will be upgraded and activate the pro apoptotic proteins like bax and bac pro apoptotic proteins will enhance the mitochondrial membrane permeability and so the there will be loss of protective function of bcl2 which will uh, keep the membrane impermeable so there will be leakage of cytochrome c into the cytoplasm cytochrome c in turn binds with the protein apoptosis activating factor 1 and forms apoptosome and the apoptosome binds with the inactive caspase 9 which will activate it and form active caspase 9 this active caspase 9 will trigger the cascade of caspase activation and active other pro caspases uh, such as caspase 3 it is called execution phase of apoptosis where the one active caspase uh, further activate the inactivate caspases some proteins like diablo or smac will enter the cytoplasm and will neutralize the cytoplasmic protein which uh, function as inhibitors of apoptosis the inhibitors of apoptosis normally block the activation of caspase and they keep the cell alive so when the inhibitors of apoptosis is neutralized then the apoptosis process is stimulated next let's see about extrinsic pathway of apoptosis it is also known as death receptor initiated pathway as it is initiated by the plasma membrane death receptors like uh, uh, tumor necrosis factor receptor type 1 and fas receptor the ligand for fas is called fas ligand and it is expressed on the t cell and the cytotoxic t lymphocytes when fas binds with the fas ligand it in turn brings four other fas together and forms the binding site for an adapter protein called fadd that is fas associated death domain the fadd will act with the inactive caspase and forms the active caspase 8 and 10 as we have seen the inhibitors of apoptosis in the intrinsic pathway here there is a protein called flip in the extrinsic pathway which bind the bind with the pro caspase and uh, block the binding of fadd that is fas associated death to mine intrinsic pathway activates caspase 9 and extrinsic pathway activates caspase 8 and 10 uh, which further activate caspase 3 and 6 the activated caspase will cleave the inhibitors of dna enzyme and so the dna enzyme become active and degrade the dna next is the removal of dead cells the phosphodiesterol serine flip out from the inner membrane to the outside of the outer membrane where it is recognized by the phagocytes and this process of removal of dead cell is called epherocytosis epherocytosis is nothing but the burying of dead cells here are some other mechanism of cell death 
necroptosis, pyroptosis, ferroptosis. Necroptosis is the combination of necrosis and apoptosis. So it is also known as programmed necrosis. Pyroptosis, where we can understand the term pyro means fever. So it is a form of apoptosis accompanied by the release of fever inducing cytokine interleukin 1. Next is the ferroptosis which is a form of death that is triggered when excessive intracellular level of iron is present or the reactive oxygen species overwhelm the glutathione dependent antioxidant defense. Like, share and comment my video. Do not forget to subscribe my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.